Good morning, watch fans. This is Jim with the big wrist. And I realized after a dozen videos, I've never actually measured my wrist on screen. So let's do that. This is a standard American tape measure. It does, you know, inches and centimeters on one side. Each side has its own. So there it is. You know, tightly, eight and a quarter. You can see that. If it's tight, Nobody wears their, their watch that tight, so I keep it eight and a half. Obviously, there it is. If you want to go with centimeter on that, you know, eight and a half on centimeter is, appears to be right at 22, if anybody can see that. That's the same, eight and a half. Flip it over and you're looking at, you know, 23 and a half to 22. So anyways, that's me measuring my wrist on screen. That's why I keep this here. I can't believe I haven't done it before. But anyways, today we're gonna to talk about the most favorite subject I think on Watch Network currently going on to watch YouTube channels. Favorite watch collection, the best bang for the buck, the best one watch, the best two watch, the best three watch. So here it is, my take on the best three watch collection. I'm a bracelet guy, so of course, everything's on a bracelet. Um, let's get right into it. Let's go with the beater, the beater watch. Everybody has to have a car, a watch they can wash the car in, something they can, you know, dig a ditch, plant a tree, paint the house. You know, this is hard to beat. The G-Shock GA 2100s. You know, the G-Shock literally is the most dependable watch I've ever owned, hands down. Has no seconds hand, so it doesn't have to bother my OCD because most, most, Quartz watches, the second hands don't hit the indices. This one's simply not a problem. No second hand. So it works out great. Um, what's to say about a G-Shock? 200 meter water resistance. You can drop it from 6 feet onto hard concrete. They come on a nylon, rubber, hybrid, kind of strap, resin. This is on the combi bracelet on your 13, 14 bucks on AliExpress. About 40 bucks on the Casio website. Or do like I do and have two. I have I have more than two. I have about eight G-Shocks. But I took this off of another G-Shock. Put it on here. It's got quick release. You know. It's got the quick release bars in there. Perfectly good watch. Love it. Big fan. Um, so this is the beater. This is 100 bucks. You know. Best three watch collection. Starting off cheap. $100. If you don't like... You know the round G-Shock. Believe me, they have one to pick your pick for your size and your style. Um, you could pretty much go crazy and do anything you wanted to, but this is what I picked. Um, beautiful watch, great watch, super accurate. Fifteen seconds a month, so that's a minute every four months. You know, hard to beat that. So has my everyday watch, the watch to wear to the office, the watch to go grab takeout. The watch you wear to work, if you work in an office or you work, even has a, you know, has a tradesman, air conditioning guy, or you're a nurse, whatever you're doing, you know, this is the watch. A diver. The most popular category of watch currently, period, is the diver. And this is the Seiko Samurai. Um, they have a tuna version, which is a different kind of case, but it's really the same watch. It's a 4 r movement. It hacks, it hand winds. It's got 42 hours of power reserve. You know, it's your standard, reliable Seiko dive watch. You could take it swimming. You could wash the car with it. You could bang it around. This one is on an aftermarket bracelet, but the Seiko bracelet is perfectly fine. It's just a stamped clasp. This is the aftermarket, uh, I believe this is strap code Hexad bracelet. So it has a milled clasp and six, six micros. Nothing wrong with Nothing wrong with the Seiko one, but again, the big wrist, I like a big bracelet. So this one goes 200 grams on the wrist with the way it is. This goes about 65 to 70 grams on the wrist. So this is a great, forget it's on your wrist watch. This is a big beast of a watch. It's a statement, you know. The Seiko Samurai, standard Samurai, is a mineral crystal with a four-hour movement and a black or a blue dial. This is the Save the Ocean. I got it used for 250 bucks. It normally runs 500. So, um, you know, I like the blue. I got a good deal on it. Came with the extra strap. No complaints here. Um, 
you know, Sem the Save the Ocean has a pretty, pretty blue dial. Look at that. Look at that graduated. It goes, the blue ocean is really blue on the top, and as you go deeper and deeper, it gets blacker and blacker, just like on the watch. And this has a, this has a uh, sapphire crystal. Um, and it has black accents here, and so, you know, it's, it's a pretty good watch for the price. If you decide you don't like a 44 millimeter watch that weighs 220 grams on your wrist, you can always just go for a slightly cheaper Orient Kamasu. You know, it comes in, the Kamasu is slightly smaller at 42 millimeters. Uh, this is 52 across on the lug to lug. This is 47 across. So this is a significantly smaller watch. But it's still, this is the standard bracelet. This is the Orient bracelet. It's a great bracelet. I mean, really, it's stamped metal, but it's got four micros that are very well spaced apart, so plenty of room. You know, it's a good bracelet. Um, it's every bit as good as the Seiko bracelet, the stack, stack the regular Seiko bracelet. So the Kamasu is nice because it comes in four color variants, black, blue, green, and this maroon version. They all have the, the cool sundial effect, you know, that little sunburst of sundial movement. It's really nice. This is a day date. This is a date only. You know, pick your poison. This is 250 used, 450 street price, new, maybe 500 bucks. This one will run you 220 in maroon and 200 in any other color. Uh, and I don't see them used at all hardly. Both have great loom. Both have great dials. They both align nicely. The, the Orient always has an aligned dial. It always hits the indices. It's always perfect. The Seiko does not. Sometimes, you know, the Seiko will come slightly off skew by half of a millimeter or fourth of a millimeter. So it won't quite line up the uh, chapter dial and the indices. Both are applied indices. They're both good watches. Um, pick your poison, but if I had to pick just one for my three watch collection, it would be this one. So, dress watch. The watch you wear when you go to dinner with the girlfriend, you have to go to an interview. You know, this is not really that expensive of a watch for what you get. This thing has a couple of cool tricks up its sleeve. For one thing, 80 hours of power reserve. If you were to wear this on a Friday, you could put this thing down put it down and pick it up on Monday and it would still be running fine. You could pick it up on Tuesday morning and it would still be fine. If you put it down Friday night, you could pick it up Tuesday morning and it would still have power. 80 hours is insane. That's more than three days of power reserve. Crazy. And because it, a, it says psyllium here on the dial, psyllium is just a Latin word for silicon. And that means silicon hairspring. So while this thing is being wound and running, if you're exposed to any kind of magnetism, it will not pick it up. Very nice, very nice. Um, so the anti-magnetism is pretty significant. I had one of my watches recently get magnetized. I have a demagnetizer, so it's easy to fix, but it was very irritating having a watch that runs plus two seconds to all of a sudden runs plus 60 seconds. So, um, you know, uh, and typically magnet, magnetized watches, they run slow, they don't run fast. But that one ran fast, so I'm not going to worry about it. I fixed it. So, you know, this is a Tissot Gentleman. Uh, came out last year, maybe early this year it came out. Comes in four colors, blue, black, white, and the rose gold is a different price level. The first three are right at $700 retail, 650 bucks everywhere, widely available. The rose gold version has got a precious metal and it runs about 1700 bucks. But it's much fancier, much prettier. I have one of these in blue and one of these in black. I think the blue is a better everyday dress watch. Um, I have no problem with the black one, and I'm going to keep it, obviously, but I like the blue one. It has the high polished center. If you recognize this has a resemblance to the Rolex Datejust 41, you are not wrong. Add a Cyclops, and you've got a 41 copy, an exact Datejust DJ41. But I hate the Cyclops, even though I probably could afford the Datejust. It had the Cyclops, and I hated it, so I didn't buy it. But I was in love with this watch from the minute I found it because it looks very similar to the Datejust. The beautiful blue, the good indices, the very nice loom. Just, this thing's got a lot going on. It's a good watch. And I searched high and low and found it used in the box for less than 500 bucks, all right? Um, I think it's a great deal. 
this is a great deal at 500 bucks. This is a very good deal at 700 bucks because it's a lot of watch. It's a very good bracelet. And you know, I'm not a fan of the double pusher butterfly clasp, but this is done nicely. This is very sturdy. It has, you know, a lot going for it. It actually has, you can see that's a half link, full link and a half link. You can see the difference in the two links. You know, that's a half link. I took one half link out and it fit the eight and a half inch wrist. It's perfect. So, you know, no complaints there. Uh, a lot of double butterflies don't have a half link. So, you know, having a butterfly clasp that makes an effort gives you a half link. That's great. And a couple of half links. So, you know, my three watch collection. If I had to have just three, and thank goodness I don't have to have just three. I can have more than just three. But let's say I just had to have just three, you know, this would be a very good three watch collection. Let's get a quick loom shot of everybody in here because, you know, we can. Let's do that real quick. I've got a little bit of a flashlight here. Uh, you can take a look at the flashlight. The loom on the Casio will be a little weak because it has a backlight, but you know, you all know that. Let's get a quick look real quick, turn off the lights. And then let's turn that off. Let's turn that off. Let me find the switch. Look at that. So, you know, the Tissot is the weakest. Obviously, the Seiko with the Seiko loom. Even the Orient, it's no it's no slouch. But look at that Casio, man. Those hands are those hands are steaming along. So, you know, but as a beater watch. And you just press the button and, and where is it at? Where's the light? Oh, that's why it's upside down. Anybody here want to see the light here quick? There it is. Look at that sucker. Very nice and bright. So, you know, I got no complaints with the, with the, with the loom on any of these watches, really. Um, a dress watch doesn't need loom. In fact, a classic dress watch has no loom. So, um, but as a three watch collection, you can't go wrong. An everyday diver, you know, a lot of people wear a diver every day. It's the most popular watch on the market. That's why you see so many divers. You can thank Block Pond and Rolex for popularizing those watches. And then, of course, 20 years ago, Tudor came along and blew it out of the park with a couple of great, um, a couple of great divers. And now, of course, the Tudor Black Bay 58. Is just a monster it sells like it they can sell them as fast as they can make them so you know great three watch collection you know i hope you guys like what i have to say and how i say it if you want to see more of my content please please my content please like subscribe and tell a friend i would love to keep doing this i only have a few subscribers so you know i'm only going to go two days a week right now but please please keep it up Keep the comments coming on the positive vibes. I really appreciate it. I want you all to have a great day and take it easy.